Amen. Well, welcome and good morning to those of you joining us online this morning. Glad that you could uh, be with us uh, in the service, even though that uh, you could not be here. Today we're starting our fall series entitled Building a Church for Today's Generation or Building a Church for Our Time in History. We want to ask the question today, what kind of people do we need to be 
to impact today's world for the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're going to be looking at a lot of different subjects over the next weeks. We're going to talk about encouragement. We're going to talk about discipleship. We're going to talk about commitment, partnering with God, stewardship, qualities that are needed in our life for really serving God, a number of things. But today we want to talk about reaching our potential or being the very best that we can be for the Lord Jesus Christ as we live our life. I believe God wants us to reach uh, that potential in our life. I think God wants us to be the best that we can be. In fact, I believe that God has designed his people for excellence. It is true he made us unique. He has made us all different from everyone else. But he also gave us a capacity to reach our potential in life. That's why we have a need in our lives sometimes to be different, to be excellent, to stand out from everyone else. In 1 Chronicles chapter 4 and verses 9 through 10, it tells us about a man by the name of Jabez. Now the first nine chapters of this book consist of genealogies listing over 600 different names. But right in the middle of all of those names, God singles out one man for spatial recognition. His name is Jabez. Jabez. There's only two verses in the whole Bible about this man, and yet he is honored above 600 other names in the book. He rises above the average because... He tends to reach his potential in life. Now, why did God say this man reached his potentials? What did he do that caused his name to be preserved now for over 4,000 years? Why does verse 9 say he was more honorable than those others? Well, look at verse 10 this morning. Here is the prayer of Jabez. I want you to bless me. I want you to enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And it says God granted his request. Now I believe there are three secrets in this prayer that can help us, that give us three principles that we can live our lives by that will help us to be at our very best for God at all times. The first principle that is needed is a great ambition, a great ambition. Look at verse 10. I want God to bless me. I want him to enlarge my territory. What he was saying is, I want to do something significant with my life. I want to be the best that God can make me in the living of my life. He didn't want to be mediocre. He wanted to expand. He wanted to grow in his life. He said, God bless me. Enlarge my land. He had a great ambition. And that's what we need in our lives as well. Old or young, old or young, we need a great ambition in our life. Ambition has to include God being first in our life. I want to say that up front. It isn't just ambition. It's a God-given, God-directed ambition that is needed. He must be first in our life. He must be first in our family. He must be first in our jobs. He must be first in the church or ambitions crumble. You see, too many people just drift through life. They have no master plan, no overall purpose to live for. So instead of reaching our best, instead of reaching our potential, we just exist. We need a dream, because when you stop dreaming, you start dying. When you stop setting goals, you stop growing. It's not only true for individuals, it's true for churches. When churches lose their ambition, they begin to die. It's happening all across America. 
Churches have lost their ambition and they begin to die. The church becomes like the people that are in it. That's why we need a great ambition for God. We need God to be first place in our life because churches become like the people that attend that church. You have to have something in life you're pushing toward, something besides retirement. Even in retirement, we can begin to say, how can I be the best person I possibly can be for the Lord Jesus Christ? God made you for growth. He wants you to stretch. He wants you to develop all the way through life. I think there are three misconceptions that keep us from having great ambitions for God. The first is that we confuse humility with fear. For example, we say, oh, I could never do that. And we think that we're being humble. But it's probably fear and not humility. A really humble person, I think, would say something like this. With God's help, I can do it. I don't think I can do it alone. But with God's help, I think that I can do it. Secondly, we tend to confuse contentment with laziness. Now, we often read, we like to read Philippians 4 and verse 11 when we don't really want to stretch ourselves. It says, I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances. But when Paul wrote that, he wasn't saying that he never had any goals or that he didn't have any ambition in life because he did. He was saying that even though his goals are sometimes not reached, yet I have learned to enjoy today to the fullest. (laughs) I like that idea. Have you ever had a bad day? But all at once, God reminds you, well, hey, you've got today. Go ahead and enjoy it. Go ahead and enjoy today. It's all right. If contentment were used as an excuse for laziness, No one would ever feed the hungry around the world. No one would worry about equality and justice for all of the people in our society. If if contentment meant laziness, we'd never reach out to a lost world and invite them to come to know Christ as their Savior. We just said, We wouldn't take any action. Oh, we'd be busy. We might work on a lot of other things. How would anyone ever get an education if they thought that contentment was not going any farther? A third grade kid would say, I've learned to be content with what I have. (laughs) And he or she wouldn't go any farther. We must not confuse contentment with laziness. And there is spiritual laziness. Fought it all my life. Fought it all my life. It's real easy to be spiritually content and let the world pass by. I'm just telling you, I have fought it all my life. Thirdly, we confuse small thinking with spirituality. People say, well, I'm just going to serve God in my own little way. Have you ever wanted to say when you hear that, "Why why don't you stretch just a little bit and serve God in a bigger way? Why not let God use you just a little bit more? Or we hear people say, well, I'm just the way I am, or that's the way God made me. But it's wrong to blame God for a lack of growth in our Christian life or even in the church of Jesus Christ. 
What's true of our lives is true of the church. You see, we must not confuse small thinking with spirituality. Jabez is an example of thinking big and trusting God to help him do something significant with his life. That's why we have to ask God to enlarge our territory, our inner territory, our spiritual life, our understanding, our passion for the world. It has to be enlarged. The second principle for reaching our potential that we want to look at is a growing faith. A growing faith. Not only did Jabez have a great ambition, but he also had a growing faith. He had a deep trust and belief in God. He had enough faith to pray and actually expect an answer. <laughs> well, that's new. Well, I prayed and expect an answer, huh? But he also had a growing faith. He was like William Carey who said, attempt great things for God and expect great things from God. Look at some interesting facts, some interesting facts about this man Jabez from the Bible. There is no mention, no mention of him having any kind of spatial talent. It doesn't mention any spatial talent or any spatial ability. Now that's interesting, isn't it? The Bible doesn't say he was a wealthy man. The Bible doesn't say anything about his education. He was simply a common man with an uncommon faith in God. You see, we shouldn't worry about what we don't have if we have faith in God because God can always make the difference. God loves to use ordinary people who believe in him, who are willing to trust him, who are willing to work for him. Jabez's faith caused him to believe that God would actually help him with his dreams. Did you know that there is something more important than being talented? There's something more important than having spatial abilities? Well, there is. It's called faith. Faith in God. It's believing that God will work through you. That's more important than talent. That's more important than ability. That's more important than wealth. Believing that God lives in me, empowers me, and works through me to accomplish his purpose. I've known many super talented people in and out of the church over I won't say how many years. Sitting on the sideline today, while ordinary people with faith in God are making touchdowns. I like the word touchdown now because <laughs> it's football season. But it's true. I've watched it over and over talented people sitting on the sideline while ordinary people with faith in a great God are scoring big for the Lord Jesus Christ. I like that because I'm pretty ordinary. Just a farm boy from Nebraska. That gives me hope. All because they believe God. Another thing that Jabez had was some type of handicap or disability. In the Hebrew language, Jabez, Jabez means painful, painful. Now, how would you like to be called painful? Oh, here comes old painful. I'd like you're at school, guys. <laughs> you understand? Oh, here, here comes old painful. Oh, well, there's old painful. Standing over there. Well, that's what his name actually meant. Jabez caused his mother pain. In verse 9, you'll notice, 
because I gave birth to him in pain. Some say that he may have been unwanted or unloved. Wow, in our society, people could identify with that. But Jabez was stronger than his handicap. His faith just kept him going. He looked ahead. He kept, he kept attempting great things regardless of what his name meant. I want to ask you a question today. What's your handicap? Is it something physical? Is it a spiritual problem? It could be an unhappy childhood. You might have a frustrating job. A lot of people do. Maybe there's a problem in your marriage. Maybe you work around a lot of people. All they do is criticize. They can't find anything wrong. All they can do is find out what's wrong. They can't find out what's right. Maybe you're struggling with addiction this morning. What's your handicap? What's the handicap? Whatever it may be, listen to Mark chapter 9 and verse 23 where it says, everything is possible to him who believes. You see, when you're hooked up to Christ and the power of Christ is working in you, then everything begins to change. The perspective changes. The possibilities changes. The results begin to change. Are you willing to let your faith grow to believe in that regardless of your handicap? Jabez had a growing faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The third principle we see here is for reaching our potential is genuine prayer. Genuine prayer. In Jabez's life, it was a simple prayer request that got him honorable mention. Now, in your life, maybe you have hesitated to ask for things in prayer. Maybe you've thought, well, it's kind of selfish for us to even ask God anything for prayer. I think the life of Jabez illustrates three things that we can ask God for in prayer. Number one, Jabez prayed for God's power in his life. We see that in verse 9. It says, I want you to bless me, but another way of saying it is, I want your power in my life. God's power is uh, very important. I want to tell you something. The power of God has brought us safely to this another day. If it was not for the power of God, we would not be here. He brought us safely to another day. The power of God can keep us from falling into sin. The power of God can help us accomplish God's will for our life. In other words, our potential. Jabez prayed for God's power. His power to be a work in his life and around his life. And it was good that his prayer was specific. Lord, this is what I want you to do. I want you to expand my territory. Let me ask you. Do you pray about your dreams? Do you, do you pray about your ambitions? Do you pray about your purpose for existence in this world? Do you ask God to give you direction for your existence in this world? That's what Jabez was doing. The third principle for reaching our potential in life is genuine prayer. At first glance, it looks like it's selfish, but evidently it wasn't. God approved it. Here's a point to remember, so I'm going to say this uh, rather slowly. This is what we need to remember. Ambition, in and of itself, is neither good or bad. 
It's a basic drive of life. Everybody ought to have some ambition. And maybe your ambition was to get up this morning. I know a couple people. That was a great ambition this morning. What makes an ambition good or bad? One thing. Motive. Motive. Why do you want what you want? What's the motive behind it? Is it a godly motive? Is it what God wants? Motive is the important thing behind every ambition we have in our life. And Jabez's motives were genuine because God never honors an unworthy request. Never. Consider something today. Did you know that God dares you to ask for big requests in your life? God encourages us to ask. How about James chapter 4 and verse 2? You do not have because what? You do not ask. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call to me and I will answer you. I tell you great unsearchable things you do not know. How about Ephesians 3, verse 20? God is able to do immeasurably more than all of what? All we ask or imagine. According to his power, what? There's that word power again. According to his power that is at work within you. Do you realize that means that you can't out-ask God? He even goes beyond our imagination and says, trust me, ask me. What do you want God to do in your life? Heal a sorrow? Heal a hurt? Solve a problem? Mend a marriage? Achieve an ambition? Then ask him. Because God wants to bless your life. The second thing Jabez prayed for was God's presence, found in verse 10. Let your hand be with me. You see, he realized that if he got the territory, there would be increased responsibility. He was saying, I'll have greater demands, there'll be more pressure, and I'll need God's help more than I've ever needed it before. Sometimes... When God answers prayer, then that's what happens. We're that way with jobs. We're that way with families. We're that way with responsibility. So be sure to ask for God's presence in your life. The third thing we can pray for is God's protection. Verse 10 says, keep me from harm. If you're a reader of the Psalms, many, many times David prayed that prayer. Keep me from harm. Keep me from my enemies. But Jabez asked for protection because in those days, the more land you got, the more influence you had, the better you were known, the more enemies and the more harm that could come to your life. That's why he prayed for protection. It's still true today. The greater your ambition, the more critics you have, the more you expand the territory, the more enemies, the more opposition that you will have attacking your life. But you can be sure, along with Jabez, that with God's protection, you can always make it through. With God's protection, you can always make it through. If you will pray for three things Jabez did, I think you can reach your potential. I think we can be the best that God wants us to be. 
Don't you want to reach your potential in life? Do you want to break out of mediocrity? Do you want to see God work in your life? Are you tired of drifting through life, not knowing where you're going? Wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't you like to build a great church for the glory of God, for the salvation of souls? If you really want to reach your potential, then follow these three principles. A great ambition under, under God's direction. Work on a growing faith. Establish a genuine prayer life. And God will help you sooner or later to reach your potential or help you to be the best that you can be for him in building his kingdom here on earth. Of course, it only works if you have a personal relationship with Christ. I know a lot of people that want to do great things, but they don't have the spirit of Christ. And then that frustrates everything. You've got to have the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ working within you. Those who are watching online, we're going to be leaving you at this time. Thanks for joining us, and may God uh, bless you throughout this week. Now, today we have some special people, and those who are going to be baptized and are helping with baptism, if you'll... Go ahead and get in place. We have people who are reaching for their potential spiritually by being baptized today.